So now we are up to the natural killer cells. Natural killer cells, NK cells, natural killer cells. The natural killer cells, they are like assassins. And why do we have cells that are like assassins? Well, neutrophils are amazing at killing bacteria. They are really good at it. And the reason they can be so good at killing bacteria is that bacteria is such a different form of life that um, we can program cells like neutrophils to know that if you see a certain molecule, it's not a human cell and kill it. However, the human body has other problems that are not caused by bacteria. And so we need a different approach. One of the reasons that we have natural killer cells is that sometimes our own cells will turn into cancer cells. If our own cells have turned into cancer cell, we need the natural killer cell to be able to identify it and ask it to die. Natural killer cells will also kill cells that have been taken over by virus cells. So there are two times that human cells need to be killed and natural killer cells are the front lines for killing the cells that need to die. Do they look like this guy? No, they do not. They look like, ah, that yellow cell there, <laughs> okay? So over here on the lower left, we have got a yellow cell, which is a natural killer cell, and a giant pink cell, which is a cancer cell. And what you are witnessing is the way a natural killer cell would kill a cancer cell or a very similar killer virus cell. Let's look at that. Natural killer cells, they will destroy cells that are infected by viruses or infected by intracellular uh, bacteria. So the neutrophils can't see them. They also are responsible for destroying cancer cells. And from our point of view, this is probably their most important job. Natural killer cells are not always good guys, however. I told you in an earlier video that your own immune system would destroy any kidney transplant that you got unless it was a really close match. When uh, your immune system destroys a transplanted organ like a kidney or heart, it is often the natural killer cells that are causing trouble. So they're not always good guys. Let's just assume they're good guys. Let's assume that a cell in your body has turned into cancer cell. And I've heard it said that almost every year there will be a cell inside your body that has transformed into a cancer cell. And yet in any given year, you don't have cancer. Partly, you can thank your natural killer cells for that. Your natural killer cells don't just go up there and like kill it though. Your natural killer cells will put a small tunnel through the cell membrane, and then they will place a special molecule, you don't have to know this name for my exam, and that molecule is going to end up going into the cell. The cancer cell will get the message that's being sent by this particular molecule, granzyme, and that will convince this cell to commit suicide. When a cell commits suicide, it's not called suicide, it is called apoptosis. Apoptosis is the normal ending of almost all of your cells. And when cancer cells are convinced to commit apoptosis, that cell will just package itself up make itself smaller and smaller and smaller until it is so small and helpless that it is easily eaten by a cell called a macrophage. Melanocytes, one of the cells they will turn into are macrophages, and then the cell is gone. Here's one of the neat things. In our research in how to treat and cure cancer, we are using this system. We will take cells out of a patient's body, we will put them into a culture dish, we will train them to recognize the kind of cancer that the patient has, and once they have been trained, we put them back into the patient where they will instruct the patient's tumors to commit suicide and just magically go away. 
we're not able to do that for all kinds of cancers now, but this is something that's probably going to be available to, for treating cancer in your lifetime. So let's talk a little bit about a third type of cell. We did neutrophils, we did NK cells. Now we're talking about monocytes. Monocytes, they look like this one here in the picture um, while they're in your blood, but once they, they just look like that while they're traveling around in your blood, after they leave, they will become cells like macrophages or dendritic cells. Those are not the only cells they can become. Do you remember we learned about glial cells called microglia? Well, when they were in your bloodstream, they looked like monocytes. Uh, when they go to the lungs, they're called alveolar macrophages. When they go to the liver, they become Kupfer cells. Don't worry about those other things. For this particular exam, you just need to remember that macrophages and dendritic cells, they used to be monocytes. And now they're not. Now they have become what we are describing as surveillance experts. What are surveillance experts? I want you to imagine that monocytes are gonna be kind of like SEAL Team 6. And the military knows that they are going to have some kind of an important battle that is going to happen in a certain area. At that battle, before the battle, the macrophages are, or dendritic cells are going to be present in the area where the battle will happen. And they're just going to hide on a mountaintop and they're going to watch what's going to happen. On the day of the battle, the neutrophils go in, they fight off the bacteria, they eat them all up, they kill them, that's the end of that battle, yay, the good guys won. On a day like that, these monocytes that have become macrophages or dendritic cells are still team six that are hiding there. They're not going to do anything. They're just going to be watching from far away. However, if there ever is an occasion where the neutrophils go in and they start to lose the battle, then the macrophages and dendritic cells, these surveillance ex experts, they're going to be seeing that something's going wrong and they are going to swoop down and they're going to join that battle. Now, I'm sure that the neutrophils that are there at that moment are going, yay, the macrophages have come to the rescue, but only some of the macrophages will actually stay. Some of the macrophages, part of SEAL Team 6, they're going to stay in the battle, they're going to keep fighting the battle and help out the neutrophils. But a large number of those macrophages and dendritic cells, they're going to swoop in, kill lots of bad guys, then they're going to swoop up the dead bad guys with their weapons and stuff like that, and they're gonna leave. Where are they going? They're going to go back to the lymph nodes and they're going to present those bad guys and those weapons as information to help the lymph nodes and cells that are living at the lymph nodes invent a new strategy for fighting whatever this bad guy is. That's why they're like surveillance experts. Most of the time, they're just hanging out in every little square inch of your body. They're just hanging out, they're observing things. If all is going well and the neutrophils can handle whatever problems arise there, they don't do anything. But if there's a problem that cannot be handled by the neutrophils, they will go down in there, they will swoop in, gather up information, head back to a lymph node where they will activate a part of your immune system that is called the adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system is going to rely on lymphocytes. Now lymphocytes, they all kind of look like this when you look at them through a microscope. If I'm looking at that kind of cell through the microscope, it might be an NK cell. About 5% of those are NK cells, but there's an 80% chance that that cell that I'm looking at is a T cell and the rest of them are going to be B cells. The T cells and the B cells they are very important parts of what's called the adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system is something that life forms on planet Earth that have got a backbone, we can do this, but the rest of the organisms on planet Earth, they can't do that. 
And we will talk about that part of our immune system in our next lecture.